I'm Amber. I'm going to be talking to you about LLM observability. Uh, how many people here are working with large language models, like just playing around with them? All right. Anyone have large language models in production? All right. I'm marking these faces and I'll talk to you afterwards. Um, so LLM observability is really like that kind of that next step past ML observability. Like you figured out ML models, you have those being monitored. Next is figuring out how to actually observe these LLMs. Like once you figure out what you want um, to be doing here, and there's no countdown, so I'm guessing I have unlimited time. Um, so LLM observability pillars. So I work at Arise, which is an AI observability company. And these are kind of the main areas we put for LLM observability. So you have your evaluation, you have your traces and spans, prompt engineering and fine tuning, which, oh yeah, I got the pointer there, um, which we're a bit more familiar with. Like we've been fine tuning models for years. Um, prompt engineering, as soon as these models came out, was kind of the first thing that we started doing with them. The newer areas, uh, if you saw Over's uh, first talk, like search and retrieval, RAG methods, um, increasing in popularity, and then the, the latest steps have really been around traces and spans and evaluations. So I'm gonna cover a few of these in details and show you what it all looks like together for an LLM observability platform. So um, Ofer went in like a lot of details with RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. I'm more just giving you the overview to see how it works in a larger LLM application. So you essentially first have your articles of knowledge. So this is your context you're giving to the LLM. Take all those articles, chunk it in different ways, put it through an embedding model, and then you can use it uh, to look up um, queries. So you might get, you might have a chat bot, and a user is asking, do you support international calling? So you run it through the same embedding model. You're now able to use like a cosine similarity or a different di distance metric to look up the most kind of similar articles that would answer your question. You feed all that to the LLM along with a prompt, and then you get a response. So RAG, I think, has been um, kind of increasing popularity and like advanced RAG methods. If you want to talk more about that, you can see me or you can see Ofer, who's pretty much an expert on that. Uh, traces and spans. If you came from more of a network observability background, you might have a different um, you know, definition for traces, but now they're coming into the LLM space where a trace, every time you run an LLM ap application, you have a callback system for this LLM. And then every step that was in that process is then documented by a trace and each individual step within that process is documented by a span. You'll see what this looks like more, but like this entire um, element here is going to be a trace. So you have an interaction with your LLM or someone interacts with your LLM application and you have all the steps documented in this process. So a span is any step um, and then a chain is kind of the individual um, it's an individual step and it's more of a general term. So this is some of the terminology that we're seeing a lot in the LLM space. So just giving a bit of background on that and the most common span types. So these are each um, invocation of these steps. So if you have an agent, um, if you have an embedding, if you have a tool, these show up in your uh, callback system. So for evaluations, these are really where um, a lot of research is ongoing. And so we're going to talk about the different kinds of evaluations because evaluations don't mean the same thing like they did with ML, um, yeah, just like machine learning evaluations. It's not just precision and recall. There's different evaluations for each part in these LLM systems. So first we're just going to talk about model versus system evals. Model evals are you know, pretty much what's happening when we compare side by side different large language models. And so we have the same prompt template, the same inputs, and then we're comparing the output. These are popular with LLM leaderboards um, when you see different benchmarking metrics, um, popular metrics like Hellaswag and MMLU. Even though pretty much the needle has even moved on these most common ones. We're already getting close to human level performance. If you want to talk about benchmarks, also happy to talk about benchmarking. 
Um, the LLM system evals are once you decided on which large language model you're going to be using, then you have to think about the systems aspect. Um, and this is where you start iterating, you're doing prompt engineering, you have stored prompt templates, um, and you're really evaluating that, that next phase once you have the models you're selecting. The next step is kind of the response versus retrieval evaluations. Um, if we go back to just, you know, kind of the, the RAG pipeline, you have your user query, you know, you have your vector stores, um, and then you also have going to like your large language model once you retrieve those documents, the response and the user feedback. So the difference really between your response evals and retrieval evals, response evals we've heard a lot about. You know, these are your hallucinations, this is your correctness, this is your toxicity. The Retrieval evals are going to be those more traditional ranking and recommendation metrics. So these are your precision, your NDCG, your hit rates. Um, I would say if you've built recommendation systems, if you built search and retrieval uh, models before, you're familiar with these metrics. And these are also common like when you're using RAG, um, also like re-ranking, for example. And I mentioned these because if you're large language model isn't performing well, and you're providing it additional context, which you should, um, it's not always, like if you have a bad response, it's not always starting here. If you have bad retrieval, if you're not getting the right context in the first place, like that's actually where you need to start before you try doing like more prompt engineering, before you switch out those large language models. And putting it all together, having these different areas, this is how you're gonna figure out where the air is taking place. Um, so Arise has an open source offering called Phoenix, which is um, an AI observability tool, and you can start using it today. I have um, a demo set up, but essentially every time you use a large language model, um, every time you have your uh, full application system set up, you can have your individual steps. So this is like an example of different span types. So you would have your agent, your LLM, you know, you're embedding and you can have evaluation metrics set up for each one. You know, we care about latency, we care about token count, but those you can't, like, you can set up, up monitors on those, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change how good a response is. For those, you need different evaluation metrics in play. And I had a pre-recorded demo, but um, I actually just have it up here, which might be a little bit easier uh, for for us to go through. All right. So this is just an example of an application running in Phoenix. Uh, again, it's open source. Uh, you can go Phoenix GitHub. We have a lot of different applications for Phoenix. And this is just, um, this is actually hosted. But here's an example of just seeing, and you can see my mouse, yeah. So here's different projects. And so this is one LLM application system, and then these are each of my traces. So this is like a full trace, so you have your input and your output, so this is like a Q&A system. And then you have overall evaluations, like responses, but if I go into that individual, um, that individual input output, that individual query, I can see, okay, so I have next steps, which are like I have my retrieval steps and maybe a, like a synthesizing step. So I can go into the, I guess we saw it like all horizontally, now we can see it vertically. Like these are the step-by-step -step process that an LLM application system is taking from input to output uh, for that user. So if you have your query, you can look at information from that query and overall evaluation metrics. So is something hallucinating? Is it correct? We also provide like the information for you to run your own evals. So you can create these um, evaluation templates or use ours but you're essentially getting um, your score, your label, and then we provide the explanations like from OpenAI function calling. So if you wanna know why something is being labeled as factual, correct, or incorrect, you'd get the explanation along with the evaluation. So this is you know, the LLMs evaluating LLMs aspect. And then for like the retrieval step, embedding step, and you can see uh, like kind of like the different levels here. So we have like evaluation metrics, for example, at the retrieval point. And then we have overall relevance of the context. So, um, you know, I could keep, 
kind of playing around with this, I think everyone gets like the general idea and you could start looking for certain span types. Like if you're interested in kind of isolating how well your LLM's doing, uh, like the token counts for your, your trunking sizes, um, you can start you know, looking at those, um, sorting by them. And this is really that first step, like after you get the LLM working, you get the application going, what do you do for evals? And then what do you do for monitoring? Because evaluations are one thing, but setting up monitors to making sure it's still performing well online and offline are going to be um, kind of like the, the next steps a lot of teams are implementing in production. All right. And I think the last slide is just a thank you. Um, so thanks, everyone.